Hello everyone, this is Professor Keen and welcome back to my lectures on space, time, and motion where we are looking at Galileo's dialogues concerning two new sciences. You might recall that we've been talking about the motion of falling objects. In particular, Galileo had just explained what the concept of uniform motion is and what the concept of uniformly accelerating motion is. Uniformly accelerating motion is motion in which equal increments of speed are acquired during equal increments of time. So when you drop an object, for example, he claims that it undergoes uniform acceleration, of course in the absence of any kind of drag. What does that mean? It means that after the first second, it's acquired some amount of speed. After the second second, it's acquired the exact same additional amount of speed, and so on. Notice that Galileo here does not, uh, does not use any particular system of units. He's just saying whatever speed it gains during the first second, it gains an equal amount of speed during the second second. Now, if we were to use the modern system of units, the MKS or the international system of units, we would say that the dropped object gains 9.8 meters per second of speed during every second of fall or we would say 9.8 meters per second squared, or 9.8 meters per second per second. Usually in this class, if we're not working in the laboratory, I'll just round off to 10 meters per second squared because it's easier to say, and 9.8 is a rounding off anyhow because it's something like 9.81, and it depends on exactly where you are on the Earth. So we'll just use 10 meters per second squared. If, on the other hand, you were to use the imperial system of units, which uh, is used in America still, we would say that the object gains 32 feet per second squared, or 32 feet per second of speed for every second it falls. So using that number, you'd say if you dropped an object, after one second of fall, it's falling at 32 feet per second. After the second second of fall, it's falling at 64 meters per sec er, feet per second, and so on and so forth. Okay? Now, that's where they have arrived at up until this point. And now what they're going to ask in chapter nine is what is the relationship between not only the speed an object acquires and the time of fall, but also the distance that it will have moved during that amount of time. That's a little bit harder question to answer. And in order to answer that question, they need to use something called the mean speed theorem. So if you jump ahead on chapter nine, chapter nine is called the mean speed theorem. And if we jump on to page 120, he begins to discuss the mean speed theorem. Now, first of all, I should say something about the mean speed theorem. This is not, although this is something Galileo spends quite a bit of time talking about in order to explain falling objects, it is not something that Galileo discovered. He did not come up with the mean speed theorem. It was discovered uh, at least 300 years before because it's talked about by a bishop and a uh, scientist named Nicole Oresimus. So the medievals had come up with this kind of language to talk about moving objects long before Galileo. Galileo is inheriting some of the work of the medievals and turning it to his use, okay? So now what is this mean speed theorem? It's a fairly simple idea and Galileo explains it using a picture, that is figure 9.1. So direct your attention to figure 9.1 and he, first of all, in ex so let me just read what his theorem one, proposition one is, which is a statement of the mean speed theorem. He says, the time in which any space is traversed by a body starting from rest and uniformly accelerated is equal to the time in which that same space would be traversed by the same body moving at a uniform speed, whose value is the mean of the highest speed and the speed just before the acceleration began. Okay, let's look at that one more time. I'll kind of explain it as I go, and then I'll explain how he justifies this. He says, a time in which any space is traversed by, by a body starting from rest and uniformly accelerated. So he's thinking about if you drop an object, it starts from rest, it undergoes uniform acceleration, and he's interested in the space or the distance through which it falls during some particular interval of time. And he says that that space or that distance is the same space that would be traversed by the same body moving at a uniform speed, whose value is the mean of the highest speed and the speed just before acceleration begun. So what is he saying there? He said, if you wanna know how far an object moves when you drop it and it starts at rest and it accelerates uniformly, you don't need to think about that object. You could think about another object that is instead moving at a constant speed for the same amount of time. And that constant speed, speed would just be the mean speed or the average speed of the accelerating object. 
okay? So if you think about this uniformly moving object, it's gonna travel the same, same distance as the uniformly accelerating object. Now let's look at this a little bit more carefully as shown in figure 9.1. So what he says is first of all, uh, you'll notice that he's using a geometric figure with line segments instead of numbers. The line segment lengths are going to indicate certain quantities. You'll get this in no time. It's actually fairly straightforward. So he says, consider a time interval that is given by the length of line segment AB. So I'm going to sketch these out as we go. I'll write these down. So the line segment AB, in particular the length of it, you can measure the length of that in centimeters or inches or whatever you want, but whatever number you attach to the, that would be the time of fall. The length of the line segment indicates a time of fall. So, you know, if this was like four inches long, that might indicate four seconds of fall. Okay, you could use whatever units you want, but that line segment AB represents a time of fall. Okay, and then he says, okay, well, CD, I'll draw another line segment, and the length of that line segment is an indication of the distance of fall during the time interval AB. Okay, that's what CD represents. Okay. And he says, also, consider the line segment BE. The line segment BE, well, the length of that line segment indicates the final speed at the end of time AB, okay? So this line segment right here, rep the length of that indicates the time I'm sorry, the, the speed that the object will have acquired after falling for a time given by the length of the line segment AB. All right, and he also mentions, and this again is in that long paragraph below theorem one, proposition one, he says that the line segment BF, that line segment right here, that represents the average or the mean speed of the falling object. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Now, the question that's being asked then, here's the question. The question being asked is what is the distance traveled by an object undergoing uniform acceleration for a time a b that's question one we might say and in order to answer that question it's a, it's the same as answering a different question and he'll explain why this is what is the distance traveled by an object undergoing uniform motion, not uniform acceleration, but uniform motion for um, at a speed given by BF, by the way, I'll say that right now, by the speed BF for a time AB. Okay, so in other words, he's saying here, if you want to know the distance traveled by an object undergoing uniform acceleration, starting at time, I guess, the point A, and traveling for a time given by AB, so its final speed is BE, what's the distance traveled by that object? Well, in order to answer that question, all you need to do is ask a different question, what would be the distance traveled by another object going undergoing uniform motion or constant velocity motion at the mean speed or the half the speed that is the speed given by the line segment bf for the same time interval a b okay so what is the answer to question two i'll come down here the answer to question two that is what distance would the object traveling at a speed bf for time a b given the answer is that the distance 
is represented by the area of rectangle rectangle a b f g so this rectangle right here a b f g the area of that rectangle denotes the distance traveled by the object moving at a uniform speed for that time so namely the distance is calculated by the product of the speed which is given by the the length of the line segment bf and the time and that's given by the length of the line segment ab in effect we're forming the rectangle of the speed and the time the speed is given by this line segment the time is given by this line segment when you multiply those two together you get the area of this rectangle and the area of that rectangle gives the total distance traveled okay um, so you might this is basically what you do I mean you do this all the time let's suppose I were to tell you that you are traveling at 60 miles per hour down the road for one hour how far did you travel well you take 60 miles per hour times one hour and you get 60 miles pretty straightforward you're forming the rectangle of 60 miles per hour and one hour you're finding the area of that rectangle okay so he's using this geometrical way of thinking about a distance traveled uh, you know we don't use uh, Galileo uses words like form the rectangle of these two quantities and we don't say that anymore we just say multiply two quantities but there are cases where our language has retained this kind of geometrical understanding so for example when you say take the square of two numbers what you know what is three squared well what are you doing you're multiplying three by three you're finding the area of the square that has a length of three on each side or when you say let's take two cubed well we're using the language of a geometrical figure a cube you're saying multiply two by two by two and that would be two cubed or two to the power of three we still use the language two cubed that would be eight right so that kind of geometrical language is at least retained by us when we're talking about squared and cubed he uses geometrical language multiplying any quantities he said form the rectangle of bf and ab to find the distance traveled okay hopefully that's making sense all right now what does this have to do with the distance traveled by the uniformly accelerating object and tell you what why don't you think about this for a moment I'm gonna stop and come back in the next lecture and explain how the distance traveled by the uniformly moving object is the same as the distance moved by the uniformly accelerating object and maybe you can see this right away when you're looking at the area of the triangle